Welcome back to the shop once again. Today we have a Vistian SC90V variable displacement scroll compressor. And we're gonna tear it apart, we're gonna show you what's inside and how it all works. Now they use these on the Ford Escape hybrids, they use them on the Ford 500, the Montegos, Freestyles, and I think they even used them on the early Thunderbirds around the 90s, late 90s. Uh, they use it on the Thunderbirds too. Now the idea behind a scroll compressor is that they're quieter. They're much quieter. They do the same thing, but they're much quieter. I actually have a um, scroll vacuum that I use, uh, shop vac, and it's a real quiet compared to a regular shop vac. They use these for air compressors and of course for refrigerant, which is the same thing, basically a gas. Um, and they use them a lot of different places where noise is an issue. Okay, so the idea here is to make it nice and quiet, but do the same thing. Uh, so it's not pumping, pumping, pumping like a piston. And on this one, it actually has a variable displacement valve back here. It's automatic, it's not electronic. Uh, so it's based off of system pressures. Now the idea here is once the cabin temperature has been achieved, it's nice and cool inside the cabin, we can actually zero out the pressures on here with this valve and therefore relieve the amount of strain on the on the engine through the belt here. Now of course it still does have a clutch that can control on and off on here um, but the idea is that with this valve right here we can vary that automatically okay to get that perfect pressure without cycling the clutch so much. So therefore it's less idle sag, um, there's less uh, noise in general, uh, it's just a better overall experience for the driver of the vehicle. So that's the idea behind this right here. And of course, by doing so, turning it off when it's not needed, basically, uh, we can increase fuel economy. And I think that's why they chose this for the hybrid escapes, okay? Now, these are a little bit different, this exact model right here. There's actually a, th a thermal cutoff switch right here that's part, it's, it's pressed into the housing, it's pretty tight in there. And whenever this housing reaches 247 degrees, it opens. And as you can see here, the wiring for the clutch on here comes up, goes over that switch, and goes through it before it comes back out and completes the circuit to the uh, magnetic clutch here. So what that'll do, since it's wired in series, it'll break the circuit and not allow it to go on if it does indeed um, overheat. So there's a lot of different cool features built into these. And in general, they're pretty reliable. Uh, they have a few gasket sealing issues. Um, this one was just worn out in general. And this valve back here, I have a whole video on that, how they get stuck in that neutral position and you lose your cooling ability. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and tear it apart, show you what's inside, show you how the scroll compressor actually works. And I'll link to some animations down below to give you an even better idea how the scroll system works to compress the refrigerant. So we'll just go ahead and start pulling it apart on here. And this is all pretty much general. I just want to show you how each piece comes apart on here. Maybe explain a little bit about each one of them. So right here is the magnetic disc clutch on here. And it has a pulley behind it and then the magnet down below. And that sucks this plate to the pulley, which is always spinning with the belt as long as the engine's running. So we'll go ahead and pull that off. Now this one has a nut. They usually have a bolt on here. Anyways, they spline to the center shaft on here, and that's how it transfers power to the inside of the compressor. Pretty basic. Now, the, the pulley itself, and usually the magnetic uh, part down below, that actually sucks that disc to the pulley. They have snap rings on them. So we'll go ahead and get some snap ring pliers, and we'll just pull those off of there. As long as you can get inside of here and get them out. There we go. It's a little stuck in there. These things are usually a pain, but as you can see, they eventually come out. Now, this will not just fall off of here, it's got to be able to prevent vibration. So it's pressed on there just a little bit, just a slight amount. So you can just tap it off or ideally use a two jaw puller and pull it up off of there. Of course, put your nut back on. Of 
But because this is a failed compressor and it is going to the recycle bin, we can just go ahead and tap it off. We'll put that off to the side. And then here's the magnet right here. Again, it's pretty standard. And this one also has a, um, a snap ring on it. And it's slightly pressed onto there. So if I could see down here. Where's all those flashlights I was talking about the other day? Okay, there we go. This one's way down in there. There we go. Okay. And again, this one pretty much just comes right off of here. So this one comes up and off. Okay. You can see how it all works. And that's attached to that other piece. We'll just leave that flopping. And we'll cut that off actually. Since it is going to the scrap yard. Let's get that out of here. Now these right here is just the two ports for the high and low pressure, you know, suction and discharge. There's the sensor, there's that. Now these, they're, they're pretty simple. They actually just unbolt and come apart. So these are 10 mil right here. So we'll pull off the top side and we'll show you what's inside of here. always cool to take stuff apart that way you get a better understanding of it and you know how to diagnose them better and you're not a parts changer okay that's what i love about it there ain't no school that's going to teach you about the insides of this they're going to say it's non-serviceable get it out of here put the other one in okay so we should have all the screws i don't think this one goes anywhere Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I think it's an oil drain, to tell you the truth. Same thing. It's got a little attachment to the housing on here. Cat claw. Like I said, I use this thing for everything. Even when you're destroying stuff. Okay, so basically we'll just pull this off of here. Nice and even. And we'll show you what's inside. Hopefully it's not destroyed. Okay, here we go. So you can see right here, there's all these different pockets here for the ball bearings that are inside. Okay, and then there's a, uh, like a counterweight almost right here. You can see it right there. And you see how this part that attaches to the one side of the scroll inside of here, it, make, it makes an oblong rotation on there. So you get the counterweight, but this also doesn't just spin, it's oblong. Get that out of there. And that's how it does the scrolling action. You'll see that here in a second. So but just a bunch of ball bearings right here uh, to hold to the other side so this side of the scroll can be supported. That's the idea here. And then deep down inside here is the bearings that actually support the shaft and the counterweight and everything coming through here. Now on these, uh, you know, unlike the other Ford compressors, the shaft seal is non-serviceable. It's kind of an interesting fact on there. Um, looks more like a bearing on there to me, but that, I don't see those fail too often. I see this gasket right here, which again, I've never seen it serviceable. Maybe someone knows where they're at. These things leak all the time and they lose refrigerant, oil, and everything else. That's how these usually fail. This one just has a lot of miles on it. So you see a bunch of ball bearings here, so we'll go ahead and pull this up and out of here and just dump them off to the side. Some more roller bearings in here. Okay. Some destruction inside of here. Oh, the, uh, the anti-friction coating that's in this groove right here, as these two go together, actually came apart. Because this scroll goes into that scroll and it kind of swirls around in there and makes sense. Anti-friction coating built right into the groove on here. Okay, so that's another cool fact. 
And you can see this one's not destroyed. Now, a fun fact, I guess you could say, is that um, what's unique about these is that I had one of these on a scroll compressor. It wasn't variable displacement. It was on a, it was an E-Van, okay? A big old bus E-Van. And everything was together. Everything was fine. Plenty of refrigerant in the system. Um, the clutch engaged, okay? The whole clutch system, you know, engaged with the clutch. Everything looked fine. When you turn the AC on, plenty of pressure. The shaft spun, no noise. And guess what? The insides were not spinning. <laughs> the insides were literally not spinning because they were broken on the inside in there. So it broke off from the shaft on there. And it just sat there and spun. Everything looked good to go, but the pressures weren't doing anything. Um, that's where knowing how to diagnose with pressures really led me right to the inside of the compressor. Now, once the belt was off and you're able to spin it and everything like that, you knew right away, it's spinning too easy. You know the insides are broken. That was an interesting failure, just as a side note there. Now, this right here is just the other side of the scroll that's part of the base of the housing on here. So we'll go ahead and pull off this valve right here. Now, again, this is that variable displacement valve that automatically adjusts the, the um, difference between the high and low side of the system. And I'll put a diagram down below, a general diagram um, that shows how this valve right here works. Now, like I said, this valve is the one that always sticks, you know, it gets dirty after a while and all that. Um, and usually if you go to a Ford dealership, they'll tell you, hey, you gotta replace this whole darn thing, the whole compressor. You can't buy it separately, even if they do know that's the actual cause. Now, if I didn't mention it already, the symptom with a sticking valve is that you'll be driving along the highway, cruising along, everything works great, it cools great, You'll go, and, and then you go down to, let's say, stop and go traffic, lower RPMs. All of a sudden, it's not cooling so great, it's stuck, and it's equaling out, okay? So you're just going back to like static pressures. So it's not cooling you off. The, the dish chart or the, uh, the suction side is too high. So your suction pressure should be too high and your, your um, discharge pressure should be about normal to low, okay? But again, unless you know how to diagnose through pressures, you're never gonna know that. So it's a pretty simple valve, okay? It's all inclusive, it's self metering. There are ones out there on other brands, like I worked on a VW they have electronically uh, controlled ones, which is even nicer. I think those ones get rid of the clutch entirely um, because they can, they can control it that way. So that mm, just goes down inside of there to the passages to control it, okay? So we'll go ahead and we'll pull off these four bolts. And these hold the other side of the scroll in there. Okay. Whoa. And it just fell apart. It's just another seal on the back side there. Again, it's cool to tear this stuff apart. It really is uh, to see how it all works. Now this one's stinking, jeez. So you can see there's some passages for the refrigerant in there. You can see that, uh, that uh, variable displacement valve, how it comes up and through here. There's a hole right here for it too, and how it um, interacts with the system inside of there, okay? Now, this side of it right here, you can see this is the back side of it, the refrigerant passages, and of course the um, where that valve actually sits against, okay? Right there, that's how it sits against there. It has a spring and all that, okay? And that is a control port right here. And you can see where it comes in right here, okay? And then the refrigerant travels around and then the other scroll, as it goes around and around with that oblong motion, will compress it as it goes further. Again, the animation, I'm gonna link to down below, will help a lot with this. Basically, it travels around and gets higher and higher pressure, and then it'll discharge out that middle hole on there. Hopefully you're able to see that. And that'll come out the back side here, right here, to our discharge on here. Okay, our discharge line right here. So we have a port right there. Let me get in there. A port right there. Right there, and then there's one right there. So you have our high and low side. But 
As you can see, I just wanted to tear it apart, show you basically how it works, each of the different components in here. It is a lot different than the FS10s that Ford uses a lot. Um, they don't fail too often. Uh, they got a few different little quirks to them, um, but they're interesting. They're definitely interesting. They're nice, quiet compressors, and they use them on a few different select models. I don't see this too much in the Fords, whereas the, um, the imports use them a lot, okay? For different reasons so that's about it hopefully you enjoyed this video i'll see you next time